Hey everybody, welcome back to chemistry. And so we're going to look at this problem. So if I can increase the slide. This says as follows, the first ionization energy symbolized by IE1 of a lithium atom is 5.18 times 10 to the 2 kilojoules per mole. What is the wavelength of light in nanometers that is just sufficient to ionize a lithium atom? Okay, if I can reduce the slide. Okay, I think this problem is a little bit on the difficult side. So first, let me talk a little bit about what ionization energy is. And so in this particular problem, we're dealing with lithium atoms. Now, you might be given a different atom with a different ionization energy, but for here, we're working with lithium atoms. And so, as you may know, lithium symbol is Li, and you look up its atomic number, it's three. The neutral atom has three electrons. Let me draw a simple picture of it. So here, we have the nucleus of the lithium atom. And so one of the things you're gonna learn um, pretty soon is that here we have areas away from the nucleus where electrons can be found. And so this first area that's somewhat um, distant from the nucleus is called the first energy level. And in this first energy level, you can find two electrons. So these are electrons here, okay? And then, as you know, lithium has a total of three electrons. And so the last electron is found a little bit further away in the second energy level, so here it is. Okay, so what is ionization energy? It's the energy required here to kick off this electron off the atom and having it go into space. And so in this particular problem, that energy is provided by light. So imagine light here is streaming in on the atom, and so you're gonna event eventually figure out what is the wavelength of light that just has enough energy to knock this electron off the atom. Okay, so one of the problems that we kind of face in this problem is that you can see that the ionization energy is not in joules. It is in kilojoules per mole. And so I need to talk a little bit about that. It's actually in kilojoules per mole of atoms. So here, what you have to sort of imagine is that you have a mole of lithium atoms here. So here are the, a lot of lithium atoms here. I'm only gonna draw a few more here. So imagine here you have a mole of lithium atoms. And so all these are gonna be struck by a mole of photons, and then you're gonna get off a mole of electrons flying into space. So you're told what the ionization energy of a mole of atoms is in this problem. It is 5.18 times 10 to the two kilojoules per mole. So what that basically means is that you need a mole of photons with that energy to knock the electrons off. So what we're gonna have to do is this. Um, again, we have the ionization energy here. And so, this is just an energy, so I can write it, just remind myself that this is an energy, so this is the capital E, will be fine. And then again, this is in kilojoules per mole. And so this is gonna be equal to the energy that one mole of photons must have to knock off a mole of electrons from a mole of these atoms. So the ionization energy is going to be equal to the energy of one mole of photons in this problem. So what do you do next? Well, if you have the energy of one mole of photons, you can use Avogadro's number to figure out the energy for a single photon. So I'm just gonna write E photon for a single photon. And then after that, the problem is not so difficult. You can convert energy of a photon eventually into the wavelength of the photon, okay? So let's go ahead and first take this ionization energy in kilojoules per mole, um, which is 5.18 times 10 squared kilojoules per mole of atoms, and recognize that this is gonna be the same value of energy that the mole of photons must have. So that's gonna be 5.18 times 10 squared kilojoules per mole of photons. Okay, so now we're at the energy of one mole of photons, and so let's convert this into the energy for one photon. Okay, so the next step is to take kilojoules of a mole of photons 
and get this into an energy of a photon in joules, okay? So let's go ahead and do those steps. So here we have 5.18 times 10 squared kilojoules per mole photons. And so let me go ahead and convert kilojoules to joules, so that's not so difficult. So we have one kilojoule in the denominator and a thousand joules in the numerator. And then the next step is what we're gonna do is convert mole of photons into individual photons. And so you're gonna need Avogadro's number. So one mole of photons, which I'll have here in the numerator, and then the denominator will be 6.022 times 10 to 23 photons. Okay, so when I did this earlier, the number I got was 8.60179 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Okay, so great. This is the energy for one photon. So now you can figure out what the wavelength of this photon is. So let me remind you how to do that. So you have the energy of a photon is going to be equal to h nu. Another way you can write that is hc over lambda of the photon. So it's hc over lambda of the photon. Okay, so the next step, let's go ahead and solve this for wavelength of the photon. So that's going to be wavelength of the photon is equal to hc energy of the photon. So at this point, it's just kind of plugging in numbers and working out the answer. And I'm checking to see what they want wavelength in. They want it in nanometers. Okay, so here Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to negative 34 joule seconds. Speed of light, three. Let me use the achieve value here, which is 2.998 times 10 to the eight meters per second. And then we're gonna divide that by the energy of the photon. So we worked that out, and the energy of the photon is 8.60179 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Anyway, if you wanted to, you can sort of carefully cancel out units, and you'll see what's left is meters. So what I got in meters was 2.3109 times 10 to the negative 8 meters, and so they want this in nanometers in three significant figures, so I think you can work that out. It's going to be 231 nanometers. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.